Armor Studio NYC. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today, we're going to be building a Tamiya Churchill in a 135th scale. This tank right here, or specifically this manufacturer right here, is one of my favorites. Very, very beautiful box art. With Tamiya kits, you're going to be expecting a lot of good, high quality builds, good plastic. Um, really, really great instructions. So let's see what we got in the box. We got vinyl tracks. Uh, not the biggest fan of vinyl tracks, but they do the job, especially these later Tamiya kits. We have very, very nice crisp detail on a lot of these plastic parts. And that's something I really, really like about Tamiya to begin with. It's This is only going to be a four sprue adventure to build a main battle tank from World War II. Uh, Tamiya has somehow found a way to take all this detail, all the goodies that come with a good model tank and stuff it into four sprues. Let's take a look at the instructions here. Uh, these instructions, very, very clear, very straight to the point, and uh, you won't have any issues. Today we're gonna be using a lot of our Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. This is our best friend when it comes to um, gluing plastic parts together. Very, very effective. Um, Cutting these out the sprue gates. And uh, this is pretty much simple construction right here. And this is the thing I really like about Tamiya. They have a lot of these notches and it's really, really kind of foolproof. So you really cannot make a mistake. Uh, I'm not saying that they don't happen. I've definitely made mistakes. Um, but as you see, we do have poly caps here. We're not gonna be using poly caps. This is for the idler wheel, I believe. Uh, but we will be using poly caps for the sprocket so that way they can continue to rotate, which the articulation in Tamiya kits, I mean, it's just overstated at this point. If you're a beginner looking to get into the construction of plastic models and you don't really know where to begin, then Tamiya is definitely the kit for you. My gosh. Anyway, like we were going along nicely there. Um, so. Tamiya kits, very good uh, detail, very good plastic, uh, very easy to put together. Just a little bit of Tamiya cement and you'll pretty much be on your way to stardom. Not really. Here we're going to be building the uh, front fascia. So this is going to include the machine gun. now. Again, uh, just an ingenious design. There's like this little piece right here that if I can get in, then uh, it holds this machine gun in place uh, without any excess glue. And once you glue it down, it's not moving anywhere. So it's stuck there and it has good articulation. You can move it around. Uh, not so much range of movement on this one, but it still is pretty good. Now, this is a very interesting portion of this kit. This uh, driver's hatch is able to be left open or closed. And after much careful deliberation, I just decided to well, keep it closed. Makes it a little bit simpler. And also I've had really, really bad luck in, in the past with uh, parts that I've left open. I've popped hatches off while painting, while moving. And uh, not that they're beyond repair, but <laughs> trying to glue these parts back together and still make them look the way they came out of the kit is very, very hard sometimes. Moving on, we're going to go to the running gear. Now this Churchill tank has a ton of road wheels. Um, typically, a lot of these World War II tanks, they had a nice decent row of, uh, of road wheels, not like the modern tanks you see today. Um, there were countless. I kind of forgot how many, but very, very satisfying when you get to cut all of these wheels off of the sprue and they're only connected by one part. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. So let's get to cutting. The cutters that I'm using are Tamiya sharp cutters. Um, I know there's probably a better way to take these off the sprue, but to limit uh, excess plastic everywhere. I just cut them straight from the sprue uh, instead of you know cutting from the arm and then cutting 
the uh, the excess off. Just a little bit of, again, just a bit of Tamiya glue and you're pretty much set and just on your way. Now these road wheels were able to uh, continuously rotate without the use of poly caps if you just glued the little nub that you got there. Uh, but I, this is, a, this is an early one that I put on and I didn't really think about that. So I kind of glued this wheel shut. <laughs> um, and I didn't really think about that until after I did it. But I got the whole run completed. Uh, filming that whole process would have taken a very long time. So I just super cut that. And we're going to add just a little bit more detail that is given to us by the kit here. Uh, now this part was very long. I don't know if you guys heard that motorcycle, but it was a lot louder. Really? Anyway, um, this part here was, uh, it was kind of finicky, but not really. Um, you kind of just set it and then you had to glue the individual little parts and uh, it would be a little bit better. And then we pretty much just do the same for the opposite side. For certain load bearing parts, we're gonna use uh, regular Tamiya cement. This is much more viscous. Um, it really does adhere glue a lot better. You guys will be able to tell the difference here when I uh, slap it on. Um, you can just tell it's a little bit more thick. If you give this glue probably about 10 seconds prior to attaching it to the vehicle, um, the glue kind of sets into the plastic and it will adhere and it will not go anywhere. This is like super glue, but only thing it melts plastic too. It is one of my favorite to use for a lot of load bearing parts. Um, so I know the model kind of won't fall apart if, um, if a lot of weight is on it. Not that to me as thin cement would do that, but for me, it's just a little bit of a, of a safety thing. And uh, on this running gear part, you know, it, it will come under a lot of stress when we go to put the, uh, the upper hull on it, when we're moving it around to paint and all that other stuff. So you kind of really need that extra bit of security uh, prior to going forward. And the Tamiya Thick Cement does that perfectly. And we're just going to repeat the process by using Tamiya's um, thick cement uh, by running it along this entire edge right here. Now, this is the entire running gear unit, and this is gonna go attached to the lower hull of the tank. This is definitely load bearing and you have a lot of coverage. Tamiya thin cement dries very quick. So if the, if the part isn't attached to what you need glued, um, and you try to run some glue on it and then attach it, you may not have the best adhesive properties that you could possibly have. Um, so that's why I really like this thick cement for large pieces and again, load bearing parts as well. Moving on, this is the upper hull portion and you gotta get this really thick brace, I guess, out of the way. It was very hard to take off and I had to use a completely different set of cutters. Uh, these are all the parts that consist of the turret here. So let's get started. Uh, again, really, really good articulation by Tamiya here. Uh, no poly caps needed to allow the, uh, the actual barrel brace to uh, continuously articulate like that uh, as long as you don't put glue where it's not supposed to be um, which i have also done in the past um, you'll be fine uh, really really thick seam line here um, only good part about this is that it's not really seen so this is underneath the turret so you don't really you won't see this big seam line that's right there uh, so we don't really have to use any tamiya putty uh, to fix this. Adding the uh, the face 
of the barrel is very easy. Again, it goes in almost like Lego uh, with how uh, conformed all the plastic is and how precise all this plastic is. Just one little run of Tamiya Thin Cement and you can see how it just sets in there very nicely. Um, set it into place, you feel a little bit better and that's pretty much it. And after that, you're good to go. Very simple uh, with this top plate. Don't put it backwards like I was about to do. I literally can't fit any other way. Um, there is a little bit of a seam line. Uh, there's a little bit of a gap, but with some Tamiya glue, um, it's gonna go away and you won't really have that issue there. And guys, this is our final build. Uh, there was some stuff that I didn't film um, simply because I couldn't really get the right angle. Um, I'll definitely work on that going forward though. But um, yeah, if you notice that there are some holes still, uh, that is because there are certain parts of the uh, model that I would like to leave off and paint separate and then place it onto the model. I think it would just be a lot easier, a lot cleaner. Uh, join us next week for when we paint this. Um, it's going to be very simple, but thank you guys so much for swinging by.